In this bulletin, Cape Coast Trifle Prasso Road temporarily open for light vehicles following ongoing rehabilitation of damaged Jukwa Bridge. Encroachers on CSIR lands at Adenta Frafa have given 48 hours to vacate. More than 12,000 refugees and asylum seekers living in Ghana as world marks Refugee Day. Nadmo to fine-tune earthquake preparedness in Accra and its environs this week. And more attacks on churches in Nigeria. Kaduna State records three deaths after attacks on two churches. Good evening and welcome to News Hour right here on GBC News and on GTV. My name is Jonathan Thompson. And I am Samia Lacorte. We stream live on Facebook and on YouTube Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. Robert Frimpomansel translates the news into sign language. In our first story, the Cape Coast Trifle Prasso Road has been temporarily opened for light vehicles following ongoing rehabilitation of the damaged bridge. Continuous heavy rain on Friday and Saturday put pressure on the bridge at Jukwa, causing its collapse and cutting off communities linking Cape Coast and Trifo. The Minister for Roads and Highways, Mr. Kwesia Mwakwata, has been inspecting the ongoing works and other destruction caused by the rains to the road infrastructure. Clara Mlano has more. This is not the only damaged bridge in the central region as a result of the continuous torrential rain on Friday and Saturday. There are about three others in different towns, rendering them inaccessible. However, this is the first to get a quick response with the Ghana Highway Authority preparing it for motorists to avoid the sweet Osuwari River busting its banks again. The washed laterite has been replaced and the bridge is supported with boulders to put the over five decade old bridge in proper shape. Though opened for use, heavy duty vehicles have been banned from using the reinstated road for now. We have done the back filling of this bridge where we are standing now and it was done within 24 hours. Engineers moving all the way from Accra led by the director of the uh, BMU, you know, right from Accra, from motorway, for two weeks now, you know, my engineers have not slept. They are moving from one place to the other. The destruction affected over 300 people in the area, mainly their homes. The affected persons are seeking shelter with relatives, awaiting relief items from NADMO after the Director General's visit on Sunday to ascertain the extent of damage. Here at Ebrim Berase, in the Commander Edina Guaf Ebrim Municipality, economic activities have been disrupted in the main farming community cut off from the rest of town linking Saman, Isiem and Berase. Though the indigenous have created a bypass, their fear is that the Intenary River may overflow its banks and worsen the destruction if the bridge does not receive urgent attention. No economic activities can go on per the collapse of this bridge. So I'm taking the uh, opportunity to advise the indigent, those of us living here, that let's exercise patience, let's obey simple advice given by the NADMO and the other security agencies pending we resolving the whole process for us. Sector Minister Mr. Kwesi Makwata said repair works could last for about a month. 
uh, it, it was a bus covered, you know, about three by three uh, cells, bus covered, has, co has completely collapsed, you know, and it's a major uh, problem now, it's a major challenge. If you look at the length, it's about 30 meters long, so the quickest way of reinstating the road is to launch you know, a steel bridge over it. But fortunately, we have taken delivery of some maybe, uh, maybe bridges from United Kingdom. You know. So we have decided to uh, start the civil works as quickly as possible. Heads in the region are appealing for more assistance for victims. You can know. Now people are stacked up here. They cannot move. So if you have business in Cape Coast doing, then it means you cannot do anything. And the same government resources that we are saying is scarce and that we need to use them for other things are being used to put up the belly bridge here, go get some relief items for our people. So it has seriously impacted on the lives of the people in the region. Uh, you know, government cannot do it all alone. So that is why we're extending that hand to uh, individuals and organizations to come in to support the region. We are seriously in difficult times. Portions of the road linking Cape Coast and Anchor Fall were also damaged by the rains. A prison officer among volunteers helping affected victims drowned due to the intensity of the flash floods. The Sechi Jokwa Bridge is another bridge badly affected by Friday Saturday's rains. For GBC News, Clara Manu reporting. Developers who are encroaching on the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research lands at Adenta Frafraha have 48 hours to vacate. The Greater Accra Regional Minister, Mr. Henry Korte, who gave the ultimatum, said government will not hesitate to do what is necessary. He was speaking to the media at a news conference in Accra. Accra Regional Minister Mr. Henry Korte was concerned about the rate at which individual developers are taking over lands belonging to the Animal Research Institutes of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. He gave the assurance that government would demolish buildings on such lands and that would be done without prior notice. The Regional Security Council, RECSEC, gave a 48-hour ultimatum to the encroachers to pack their belongings from the said land. RECSEC is hereby giving a 48 hours notice from now, effective now as we speak, to all those who are putting up such unauthorized structures within the fence wall to pack their tools and materials from the land without fail. We want to send this strong warning to all land guards and persons within the 200 acre perimeter of land that has been fenced, as I said earlier, to pack their things and begin to walk away. 48 hours is what we've given them. We will move in and do what is needful for God and country. The Animal Research Institute of the CSIR has been complaining about the increasing level of encroachment on the about 1,000 acres of their lands and attacks on its staff by land guards. Rexek said any person found loitering on the fenced 200-acre land at Adenta Fafraha after the deadline would be dealt with in accordance with the law. A private developer has put up a building almost at the lintel level on an electricity substation as Adauto in uh, uh, Kumasi. The Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Ms. Cecilia Dapa, took journalists to the place and warned that such impunity could result in dire consequences. The problem falls within the purview of the Ministry of Energy but has implications for the Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources since water supply would be affected if any of the power cables underground the substation is damaged through the construction of the building. 
The Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Ms. Cecilia Dapa, led a team of officials from her ministry, the Ghana Water Company, and the Electricity Company of Ghana to Aduato, where the private developer has encroached on the premises of the ECG substation. The structure is said to be sitting on the main ECG distribution line from the Owabi water treatment dam as well as some of the power cables underground. Damage to any of the distribution lines could negatively affect a greater portion of residents in the greater Kumasi metropolitan area. Ms. Cecilia Dapa said she would liaise with the Minister for Energy to resolve the issue to prevent any crisis. We are not saying that uh, ECG has every right or Ghana Water has every right to take somebody's property. No. Whoever owns the spot will have to produce genuine papers to make sure. ECG tells us they own the plots. There are ins uh, installations on it. And for heaven's sake, we need to think about the larger picture. That if I single-handedly encroach to deprive Half of Kumase is water supply. I think I would have done a great disservice to this nation and to the good people of this region. The Ashanti Regional Manager of ECG Network, Mr. Frederick Bediako, warned of imminent power and water crisis if stringent measures were not instituted to check the encroachment. Water supply is a, a national security issue. That's why we broke the rec sec here for us to be able to... Um, First and foremost, give them a first-hand idea of what is happening and then the possible effect of any level of encroachment that, that is happening there. The minister also visited the Owabi Dam to assess the state of the reservoir. It was observed that the dam had been desilted to save residents in its catchment area from flooding. Over the years, the Owabi Dam has suffered the impact of human activities, including encroachment, which has led to removal of part of its forest cover and exposed it to environmental degradation. Ms. Cecilia Dapa used her visit to plant some trees on the fringes of the dam. A simulation exercise to test the country's level of readiness in the event of an earthquake will take place in Accra and its environs this week. The four-day exercise would involve organizations that are directly responsible for managing disaster, such as the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, and the North Dakota National Guard from the U.S. Quakes trigger other devastating disasters such as intense and extensive fires, tidal waves, tsunamis, flash floods, dam collapse, among others. Ghana on record has experienced earthquakes in 1615, 1636 and 1858, 1939 in part of the western region and Accra respectively. The last destructive earthquake, which occurred on June 22, 1939, claimed 17 lives. From the 2021 Population and Housing Census report, Accra is densely populated. So, there is absolutely no open space for people to take shelter when the need arises. The Director General of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, Mr. Eric Nana Ajman Prempe, is not happy about the situation and is appealing to the authorities to create open spaces in the event of the unforeseen. I wish to appeal to metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies to take a critical look at pretending to few open spaces left and try to create new ones, not only in Accra, but all over the country. I wish to urge the Land Use and Spatial Planning Authority with deep passion to support MMDAs in this effort. I encourage LOSPA and MMDAs to impress on traditional authorities to reserve spaces for public and good health, demarcating lands for human settlements. The field exercises will begin from tomorrow, June 21 to June 23, at the Tema Fishing Harbor, a location near Community 18 of the Accra Tema Motorway and La Trade Fair in Accra. Major General Alan Dorman is the Adjutant General and Director of Emergency Services of the North Dakota National Guard team from the U.S. 
Uh, I'm very much looking forward to this exercise. I met with my team last night. Uh, there is a serious energetic buzz uh, going on. Uh, the level of preparation between uh, the Gideon team and the team that we've sent over from North Dakota to help uh, with their exercise, uh, I think the fruits of those labor are going to show uh, over the next several days. Jubilee House, Parliament House, Kotokanti National Airport, Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Rich Hospital, 37 Military Hospital, the Jasu Lodge, among others, lie in earthquake zones. The theme for the exercise, Ignite Course Preparedness 2022, Exercise Shikbong Wosomo. Well, the first flight carrying 433 pilgrims from the Tamale airport took off for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the 2022 Hajj. Three additional flights are expected to take off between Tuesday and Wednesday, with more than 1,700 pilgrims expected to be airlifted from the Tamale airport. Our Northern Regional Correspondent Mutala Isa reported that the Regional Minister, Sani Al Hassan Shaibu, who addressed the pilgrims before takeoff, admonished them to serve as ambassadors for Ghana and pray for the nation. Last batch of pilgrims who are just boarding this flight. This is the very first of four flights that are expected to take off from the Tamale Airport. In all, about 1,732. Uh, pilgrims are expected to be airlifted from the Northern Regional Capital, Tamale, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Northern Regional Minister, Al Haji Sani Shaibu, who came here to address the pilgrims before they bought the flight, advised them to respect the laws of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The whole world needs prayers, especially Ghana, where we are in hard times and there was a need for us to put ourselves together to pray for the, 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 health, the health of the nation and the President of the Republic. By this, we would be able to achieve good things for the nation and forge ahead with our national development. The a representative of the Hajj board, Al Hajj Farouk, has also been speaking to the media. Four flights planned for Tamale. The first flight, as you can see, has landed. It is scheduled to take off at 10.45, followed by the second one, that will be around 9.45 tomorrow morning. Then, tomorrow late in the night, the third flight should also be coming in to take off. Then the last flight will be on Wednesday. Four flights, then we we'll move to Accra and continue. This is the first pilgrimage in three years following the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, for the Tamale Airport, there's been a significant improvement as we have the Tamale Hajj village just completed in the nick of time to enable smooth operations. Either too, the pilgrims would have taken off at the Al Haji Ali Muhammad Sports Stadium or the Tamale Jubilee Park. But we are not too far from the Tamale uh, Hajj village for this year's operations. Some of them have been expressing their excitement and they are hopeful that this year's pilgrimage will be a success. Mutala Isa for GBC News. More than 12,000 refugees and asylum seekers are currently living in Ghana, of which 2,900 are at the Ampain refugee camp in the Elambela district of the Western region. Speaking at a ceremony to mark World Refugee Day at Ampain in the Western region, the Minister for the Interior, Mr. Ambrose Derry, said this year's theme, the right to seek safety, whoever wherever and whenever is in sync with government security goal to make each and every person in Ghana feel safe. Approach the durable solutions humanely, humanely. We are going to approach it with love. We are not going to throw anybody out as if you are an outcast, no. So rest assured, wherever you are and wherever it is, that the right to seek safety is something that we see as real and should be respected. Indeed, this right is in sync with the president's goal in the security of this country, which is to make every person in Ghana, every person, not citizen, every person in Ghana to feel safe. Asylum 
procedures vary across the world, sometimes even by region within a country. Now, each country interprets the relevant international legislation in a specific way to define its own asylum procedures, that is, the process in assessing asylum requests and to grant or deny a person the status of refugee or alternative from a protection form of protection. Now, GBC News of Wadako looks at the different phases of the global refugee program and the model Ghana has adopted. Over several years, there have been efforts at the level of European Union to establish common standards of safeguards and guarantees for a fair and efficient asylum procedure for efficient and fair decisions. Thereof, ensuring that all member states apply common and coherent high-quality standards when examining applications. In Ghana, the refugee program starts from the emergency phase, that is reception, refugee status determination and provision of assistance. When the emergency stage is over, the next phase a refugee is introduced to is the livelihood program and then the final phase, which is the end stage where refugees are no longer refugees. The acting executive secretary of the Ghana Refugee Board, Mr. Tetepadi, explained the Ghana model further. There are activities that bring the refugee status to an end, uh, which we call durable solutions. Um, this is, there are three of them. Uh, either you, uh, we assist refugees to return to their country of origin voluntarily, that's very important, uh, in safety and in dignity, or they locally integrate in the country of uh, asylum, in this case Ghana. So again, we provide assistance for them to stay here legally as foreign nationals, uh, which is the model that Ghana has adopted. Um, then the other option is for refugees to be resettled in a third country, which really is per the prerogative of that third country. Um, and so those are the three durable solutions. The rights that people have vary significantly according to their legal status. Obtaining refugee status is often an individual process and can take several months or longer depending on the country and the specific situation of the asylum seeker. While refugee status comes with a wide range of rights and often includes additional support measures such as language and courses, registered asylum seekers or people who have not yet submitted the asylum application may be subject to restrictions. These restrictions include being confined within the limits of a reception center, not being able to travel outside the municipality or the region and not being allowed to work. However, the acting executive secretary of the Ghana Refugee Board, Mr. Tetepadi, says regardless of the legal status, everybody is entitled to basic rights such as accommodation, food, health care and education for children. For GBC News, Ofri Wadakon reporting. The UK-Ghana Chamber of Commerce has organized its first Ascot Ladies' Day event in Ghana. The event is to celebrate the iconic annual UK cultural event, which will help raise funds to support the University of Ghana Medical Center's clinical trials unit. The UK-Ghana Chamber of Commerce was established in 2016 with financial support from the UK government's Department for International Trade to promote bilateral trade between the UK and Ghana. The Chamber is the leading UK business support organization in Ghana. The Chamber commemorated its great British tradition in a special curated Royal Association Ladies Day experience, which was set up as a high tea garden party. The party experience will offer business networking opportunities to member companies and other key stakeholders under the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce. The Executive Director at UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce is Madame Ajoba Chiama. Ascot's uh, races have been running all of this week in the UK and today is the Ladies' Day at Ascot in the, in, in, the, in the UK. And so we are replicating it here, we are watching the races on the TV screens. She said all the proceeds from the tickets and raffle sales will be donated to the University of Ghana Medical Center. This would then give the UGMC an opportunity to monitor the treatment of patients. And 
modify the treatment to suit our conditions. I have caused the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce and the British High Commission also to support. So I'm entreating all Ghanaians listening to me to support this good cause and donate to the University of Ghana Medical Center for this clinical trials unit. A senior lecturer of the University of Ghana Medical School, Dr. Christian O, said the clinical trials unit of the university will help identify the best treatment for diseases in the country. It will not serve only University of Ghana Medical Center. It will be used for training uh, upcoming doctors, postgraduate doctors. It will be used for researching in collaboration with other African countries and in collaboration with other European countries. Remember, whoever pays the piper calls the tune. Ascot, one of Britain's most well-known race courses, holds a special week of races in June each year called the Royal Ascot, attended by Her Majesty the Queen. Watching news are live on GPC News and on GTV. We're streaming live on Facebook and YouTube at Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. We'll be back shortly. Please stay. There are so many places we dream of being and people we would love to share these moments with. Well, that power can be in your hands. Life is now. Sign up to our credit card and enjoy up to 45 days interest-free credit so you can ease your cash flow for other investments. Join the Visa Exclusive Club with a priority pass to over 1,200 airport lounges, a collection of luxury hotels and global concierge services, 24-7 customer service, multi-trip insurance and emergency top-ups. Track your expenses and payments easily. Use on over 24 million ATMs worldwide with rewards and discounts at selected merchants and cash back for every purchase you make. All with the flexibility of blocking and unblocking your card. There's Republic Visa Classic, Adishi, Business and Infinite Credit Cards. Republic Bank, we are the one for you. Let us tell you the truth, it's not the magic that make a dream come true. It makes you achieve, but it's your hard work and your persistence. That's the way you will succeed. Dream the big goal, get up and do the road. Let us see you go, but it's a long way to go. Oh, by the miracle, help you walk the next mile. If you don't have enough energy, when you find yourself lost in weary, don't no worry. If your stomach is empty, then you're far from wealthy. Eat up, come on. Let us be a friend. This advert is FDA. Hello, this is Business brought to you by MTN with me, Esther Edu Ohumeu. 15,000 workers across the hospitality and private education sectors who lost their jobs due to COVID-19 will be undergoing a training and retraining program. The program, according to the Minister for Finance, Mr. Ken Ufuriata, and the Minister for Employment, Mr. Ignatius Bafuiwa, is to enhance the ethics of work, productivity, and ensure an attitude without change to work. Um, the Ghana Cares program um, is where, you know, we are creating um, this outlet um, to be able to do um, what we are doing today, and that's in two parts, um, as we mentioned, um, for the National Unemployment Insurance Scheme, and the training and retraining, and then going on to um, continue uh, with the issue um, of the insurance. And I think with that, quite a bit of work has been done already. Um, the steering committee, uh, key stakeholders uh, being met, um, looking at GIZ uh, for support, especially on the actuarial analysis, um, and then create a timeline that we move towards, you know, sort of the design um, phase, certainly uh, by year end, so that in 2023 we'll have something on the table. We have roughly 800,000 working for government and 1.2 working for. Um, 
the former private sector. We have roughly 10 million of our people working within the informal space. Most of these people do not even have addresses of where they practice their trade. They are not on any form of social security and they hardly can even be traced and identified. Such persons in an intervention like this, they are left out. But that is not to say that government has not been thoughtful of them. Because if you recall, at the heat of COVID, government came up with so many interventions to support the general working population, and they benefited from that. Mr. Seth Kwafu of the Regional Maritime University has won Casa Perco's Excellence Award for Best Engineering Student. Mr. Kwafu, who was also adjudged the Best Student in BSc Electrical and Electronic Engineering, received a cash prize of 2,000 Ghana CDs, a laptop, a plaque, and will also undertake his national service at Casa Perco. The Casa Preco Student Leadership Award Scheme seeks to strengthen collaboration between industry and academia by offering students a practical platform through which they can apply skills acquired. Speaking at the school's 16th congregation in Accra, Mr. Seth Kwafu of the Regional Maritime University, who won the Excellence Award for Best Engineering Student, said he hoped to excel during the period of his service with the company. Anybody that is willing to uh, pursue engineering. Some people say engineering is very difficult, but I think it's not difficult. We need to encourage, our, we need to have the behavior or the character of learning in engineering so that everything will be successful. When you say electrical is, or engineering is difficult, there is no way you are going to make it. The human resource manager at Casa Preco, Mr. Solomon Uusubona, said the partnership with the Regional Maritime University was aimed at bridging the academic and industry gap by offering students an opportunity to undergo the practical aspect of the theory they learn in the classroom. We deem it a great honor that we provide into the society and helping these young ones to get the job as soon as they complete school fit into the work environment or the industry and then they will bring on board a lot of things that they've studied in school. Whilst we also give them the um, practical trainings as well. The head of Marine Engineering Department at the Regional Maritime University, Dr. Isaac Enima, said the Excellence Award was vital in promoting healthy learning competition among students as they vie for the ultimate prize. They are also offering spaces to the, some of the best students in mechanical engineering and electrical engineering to have their national service there, to undergo proper tutelage practically over there, to make them better engineers for, for this country. Uh, it is our prayer and hope that this relationship has come to stay, that we the two organizations would work in our mutual interest and ensure that the, the marriage we have between the two institutions bears good fruits. The best electrical students from various technical universities such as the Sunyai Technical University and the Takwadi Technical University have all benefited from the Casa Preco Excellence Award. More of them are expected to be awarded soon. Casa Preco, established in 1989 by Dr. Kwabneje, provides quality drinks at affordable prices and has been certified by the International Organization for Standardization ISO. Pernod Ricard, world number two producer of wines and spirits, has reclaimed a 9.5 acre abandoned open illegal mining site at Sejmas in the eastern region and planted 2,400 trees on the land. The effort, which was made in collaboration with Arocha Ghana, was part of the company's activities to mark Responsible Day. For the reclamation, this is what had become of this 9.5 acre land close to the Adensu River, a major source of drinking water in Sejimase, near Chebi in the eastern region. The illegal miners left in their trail toxic pools of water and destroyed farmlands. In line with the Jameson Irish Whiskey Producers Sustainability Strategy, Pinot Ricard identified this pit 
funded its reclamation and the reforestation project. The staff of the company joined laborers on site on the company's Responsible Day celebration for the tree planting exercise. Responsible Day is a day where in the life of our business, everyone stops working globally. All employees leave their jobs and we all commit our time and resources to supporting our communities and our environment. A nature conservationist NGO, Arocha Ghana, is a partner in this exercise. The company will see to the day-to-day -day monitoring of the site till the trees begin to take root. By the laws of Chebi, the owner of this land loses ownership of the site due to failure to reclaim the land. The sites we are seeing, we have about 9.5 acres and um, we are planting um, of from emery and also mahogany there's also amazonia but these are all native trees the idea is that we want to encourage the native trees on the site and also to support biodiversity and also it also helps the soil to uh, regenerate and replenish itself ochehine has put in place a traditional edict where he has instructed that anybody who gives their land for mining and forfeits ownership of it if they do not go to reclaim it. So places like these, um, if it is reclaimed, then becomes a good place to actually demonstrate that when you restore, it can it can get back to its uh, productive function. Pinot Ricard, which owns 16 of the top 100 spirit brands, holds one of the most prestigious and comprehensive brand portfolios in the industry, including Absolute Vodka, Ricard Pastis, Jameson Irish Whiskey, and Kenwood Wines. Let's take the interbank and commodity figures for the day. And that was business brought to you by MTN. Thanks for watching. Good business means seeing the possibilities and maximizing opportunities. Making sure you have a responsive support system. Backs your business goals. A partner that gives you a stable platform with reliable connectivity and seamless solutions and better understands the tools required to take you to the next level. With so many moving parts in running a business, we do our best to provide you with some stability. The only kind of stability you can find with MTN Business Broadband, the fastest and most reliable internet provider in Ghana. Making sure you stay ahead and stay connected because we understand what makes your business tick. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. MTN. Hello, your live world news are uh, I am Mabel Anna. Let's do some energy stories. The Energy Commission says it is seeking a legal mandate to enforce the ban on the importation of second-hand household appliances, though there is a law banning the importation of some second-hand home appliances, the Commission lacks the legal backing to go after the importers of such goods. 
A legislative instrument is therefore being submitted to Parliament for approval. A public relations officer at the Commission, Mr. Samuel Frimpong, said this at a desensitization program for stakeholders at home in the Volta region. The Energy Commission says the country's appliances market is mostly saturated with high power consuming second hand home appliances, and this is not good for the country. It says it is determined to make the country's appliance market more efficient, so dealers in such appliances must be willing to also change in that regard. The sensitization program was therefore to educate stakeholders on the implementation and enforcement of electrical wiring regulations energy conservation and efficiency practices, among others. The head of the Public Affairs Unit at the Energy Commission, Mrs. Linda Mensa, urged the public to seek the services of professional and certified electricians to wire their facilities to help protect lives and property. A public relations officer with the commission, Mr. Samuel Frimpong, urged the public to look out for the commission's certifications and yellow labels when purchasing brand new home appliances. He said the Energy Efficiency Standards and Labeling Regulation 2022, when passed by Parliament, will give the commission legal backing to apprehend defaulters that import second-hand appliances such as refrigerators and air conditioners. When you're going in for any household appliances, don't go for the home use or the home second hand. Buy the brand new ones because they are certified by the Energy Commission that have our yellow label that has um, stars in it. And we say the more the stars, the less energy it consumes. The new regulations is going to also give us the mandate to go out there and chase those who are selling those items and then pick them, go and destroy it at their own cost. Now, petroleum consumers are worried about the persistent increase in prices of fuel at the pump. They continue to plead with government to cushion them. However, the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, says it does not have control over crude prices on the world market, adding that if crude prices go up on the international market, the prices automatically reflect on the local pricing index. Panelists on GTV's Talking Point discuss the effect of the price, of the price increases. As a regulator, exactly. from where we sit, we've seen that when the thermal oil refinery is working, mm. there are certain products that uh, we don't even need to import into the country. Mm. It doesn't mean that we are not exposed to the price of those products on the world market, but it assures security of supply. Like I said earlier, our work is not just to oversee the pricing. Our work is to also ensure that we always have the products available in the country. Mm. So when the thermal oil refinery is working, the, the bulk distribution companies who sell to the oil marketing companies buy some of these products from the thermal oil refinery. For example, residual fuel oil, for example, we don't need to import it. Mm. It also augments the aviation fuel supply in the country. That's right. It also helps to augment some of the LPG we get into the mm -hmm. country. So the volume of LPG we would have imported will not be as much as uh, we'll be doing now if the thermal oil refinery is not working. Whereas price of the national market have risen and costing local prices also increase. We haven't had any robust local mechanism to agree to um, force prices to remain stable or to even depreciate or to reduce um, locally. Um, mm. Of course, we've seen also that consistently, whereas the national market prices have risen, locally so we haven't had any robust mechanism that um, would ensure that we would have um, some um, local um, um, uh, shock absorbers that would um, um, or stall any uh, impeding, uh, impeding in case sure. locally. The authority the government is getting away for. Now, MPA's own mandate or function is to just implement this government policy. So sometimes it's difficult to argue with them because it is not really the crazy. They don't have anything to do with the taxes. They don't have anything to do with the, the money. What they can do is everything. Still on energy, residents of Alahaji, a suburb of Accra, located at New Achimota, have sent out an OS, SOS message to the electricity company of Ghana ECG for help. They said their lives are in danger due to the threat of the ECG high-tension poles that serve the community 
posed to them. The high tension pole stands in the stream that runs through the area near Best Start Preparatory School. This was reported to the ECG office at St. Jones, but no action has been taken. The residents fear that if the pole falls, there could be fatality as it is sited close to homes. The residents are therefore appealing to ECG as a matter of urgency to find a solution to the problem before the unexpected happens. We now take some data on national power generation and the water level in the Akosombo and Bridam. That ends the energy segment. My name is Mabel Anang. Health News is up next. My job is to go to Iago. My family is going to go to Iago. My family is going to go to to find a When you walk a ship, therefore, our father, you can't again. to find a bar. Do you to Facome? Never boy. Therefore, our father, in the mission, walk to find a milk book. Or me telling you, my family, my family, my book. Milk book. In Jay, get you again, I am here. Milk of a ton, Jay, get you again. Oh, 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 Obamodini, <laughs> Call your car high sensor, more winning set a your home appliances, a F, a your papa, and chip power, the bonus so daffle. High sensor, over to our brochure. Sa quality nana, over to the Ghana, and Nunton a yen yaho to soya mau. Five years manufactured defect warranty. Say a refrigerator, chest freezer, air condition, television, sound system, water dispenser. Microwave oven, blender, gas cooker, electric cooker, washing machine, smartphone, rice cooker, kettle, and our iron. Your host and seal top, Nessa for my yard day. Ain't your born a dear? Yes, sis, you know, ah, will be a. Ain't a poor high sense your room. Connor called Judy. High sense, everyday prices for everyday people. The Health News is brought to you by Lufat, Tobingo's premium gift to Africa. Vaccine hesitancy among health workers is said to be high. Records from the Ghana Medical Association indicate that about 40% of health workers are yet to go for the second dose after receiving their first dose last year. This regarding the risk associated with their work, only less than 1% of the health workers in the country have gone for boosters. To address this challenge, a 
six months outreach program is being introduced to raise vaccination champions from among health workers across the country to among others gather data on factors driving vaccine hesitancy this has been spearheaded by the ghana medical association and the ghana registered nurses and midwives association in collaboration with the health promotion division of the ghana health service having challenges vaccinating the targeted 22 million of its population due to vaccine hesitancy just about 45 percent of the population have received at least a vaccine about 30 percent of the population mainly under 25 years have refused to take the vaccines perhaps due to misinformation and disinformation health workers constitute about 40 percent of those reluctant to take the vaccine the collaboration between the Ghana Medical Association, the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, and Midwives Association, and the Health Promotion Division of the Ghana Health Service to raise vaccination champions is expected to reverse the trend and build vaccine confidence. It's going to involve a lot of training. Alongside, we'll also be doing some research to understand the reasons for the hesitancy and gather some data on health professionals. It is expected to unveil some new innovations in scaling up Ghana's COVID-19 vaccine exercise and HPD's collaborative partnership with GMA and JRNMA going forward. The project will, among other things, gather data as to why a section of the public is hesitating to take the jabs. The president of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Frank Srebo, touts the safety of the vaccines. No effect on fertility and um, taking the vaccine doesn't mean that you can't uh, produce as many children as you want. Uh, as I stand here, I have taken, uh, in fact, all my full two vaccines and even taken booster doses. And I'm sure that if I want to have children again, I am fully able to do that. Meanwhile, Ghana's active case count stands at 1,225 as of Monday, 20th of June, 2022. Sarah Furi, GBC News, Accra. And that's the for health brought to you by Lufat Tobinko's premium gift to Africa. Jonathan is standing by with some foreign news. Please stay. The show was a jar or bar and a